morning. Can you hear me? Okay, good morning, everybody. It's a great pleasure to be with you today. Great opportunity, and I would like to thank first Michael Steger from QMarket to offer us this opportunity to be here today and to talk about the innovation program we have uh, in our uh, operations. So, before maybe jumping directly on the topic of uh, today, I would like just to quickly introduce our company. So, PMI, we are the leading international tobacco company with uh, products sold in more than 180 countries. We have six of the top 15 brands. The most famous one you may know is Marlboro. We have our HQ in uh, New York, and our operation center is in Lausanne, Switzerland, where I'm based. We have today more than 82,000 employees from 140 uh, countries, okay? And this year, for the third consecutive year, we have been certified as the top Europe employer. Okay, this is just for the introduction of PMI. Now, in terms of PMI and innovation, okay, as you may see in this uh, corporate overview, innovation is one of our key drivers, is one of the key drivers of our corporate goals. Because innovation helps our company to stay ahead of the competition, to anticipate and prepare the company to forthcoming disruption, especially in this fast changing world and this highly regulated world we are facing. And innovation today, I would say, is not only limited to a few people or to just a few functions. <coughs> innovation is about relying on everyone's creativity, including support function like the information services I'm representing today, okay? But the question we had in our company is, who really can support function like information services provide real value, real innovation to the business? And this is what I will try to tackle and address during this presentation. So, over years, support function at PMI, and especially IS in this case, okay, were mainly driven by cost optimization, cost efficiency objectives, okay? And this strongly impact year after year our potential to innovate as well to develop skills in innovations. While we were still good to deliver business project to customer satisfaction over these challenging years, we progressively lost our capability to bring disruptive idea to our business. And that was becoming a real challenge for us. Because we saw that, for example, the business were now at the forefront of innovation where we were not, okay? And they were coming to us and say, guys, you are supposed to be the eyes and the ears on innovation and technology, and you are not. Okay? We are all the time up front. So, last year, our senior IS management team, including the CIO, recognized this issue and decided to put in place an organization, an IS innovation organization, with the objective to become, in the near future, I would say, a trusted business partner in innovation. Okay? And again, to have IS that could participate and that could contribute to our corporate goal around innovation, okay? Why this? Because, ah yes, we were super well placed in the organization because we work with everyone, okay? We know quite well the processes, we quite know the business strategy, so we were well placed to bring this innovative idea that can make a difference for the company. And this is how my journey started last year, okay? One objective, instill an innovation discipline in our IS organization that could lead to successful idea generation and implementation. A budget allocated to me, a handshake, and good luck. Okay? Blank sheet, money, good luck. Okay? So I was really feeling at that time like a startup within a big corporate, but like a startup. You know? Just a, a blank whiteboard in front of you and say, okay, now let's move it. Okay? So, what we did, we designed a programs for innovation around three pillars. Strategy, mindset, process, and tools. And I will take the rest of this presentation to show you each of these pillars, what we have done, and what are, are today already the first results and the key learnings of this program. What is important, maybe, to just let you know uh, already now in this presentation. When we designed the programs, 
Initially, the mission was IS, okay? Look at our IS organization. We are 1,500 employees all around the world, so focus on IS. But very early in the design, we extended the scope and say, guys, we don't want again to launch a program IS for IS. We want to make something that the business can leverage further if they show some interest to what we are doing. So we designed the program with a much more broader scope than IS, okay? Something that the business can easily, I will say, apply in the future if they are interested. And why did we do this? Because yes, it's right. Perfectly right, the business were really surfing on the innovation wave at PMI. However, when we were looking deeply, none of the business function have a clear program around innovation, and especially, as you were mentioning in the previous presentation, about disruptive innovation. Okay? Super good at PMI for optimization, efficiency, but about disruptive and radical innovation, there were no clear program. So that was one of the chains we had to be like the pioneer at PMI and say, if we do something, let's do it right from the first day and to be reusable by the business at a later stage. So now I will show you, I will say what we have done pillar by pillar. The first one is about strategy. So, we center our pillar around three topics. Blueprint, network, and partnership, okay? Blueprint. If getting, a dedicated sorry, if getting a dedicated budget for your management is already a good sign to move forward, ensuring management alignment and commitment to the approach you are proposing is fundamental for the success of your program. So for this, what we have done last year we invited all our senior IS management, plus some people from affiliate, plus some people from functions, and we work with an external partners in innovation. Uh, the company is called Enterprise Development Group, based in Palo Alto. And we did a joint exercise called Blueprint. The goal of this Blueprint was to define our innovation agenda moving forward, to find a way to uh, communicate about this program in a compelling way, but the most important was to align everyone on the Envision future. Where we are today, where we want to be in two, three years, what are the road to go there, and the most important, which kind of commitment the management can give us to move forward, okay? As well as what do they expect from us? So we did all this exercise together, it was a super nice exercise, and that was very fundamental for our programs to move confidently forward, to have this one uh, put in place. Network now. For the network, as you know, as I presented before, we are a global company, okay? So to tackle and address region, market specificity, we decided up front to set up a global innovation team. So I'm based in Switzerland, but all the rest of my team is in the world, outside Switzerland. I have people in Medellin, Colombia, I have people in Jakarta, I have people in Krakow, I have people in Russia, so we are global. And thanks to this one, we provide to the rest of the organization a varied set of skills, experience, and knowledge. Because, by the way, not all these people were from IS. So that was we need to even take people from the business inside IS to help us, okay? And what is nice today is that thanks to this global presence all around the world, we are able to develop very close relationship and partnership with innovation hubs, because we are more or less everywhere. Now, Last point is about partnership. It was mentioned before, adjacent business is a core element of our programs. So we have started looking in IS to find how we could start generating new sources of revenue for our company by selling, licensing products that we have developed or solutions that we put in place, or maybe at least to contain the investment of IS by, for example, co-founding the solution with our partners. The dream we have, it's a dream, but when you work in innovation, you need to have dreams, is maybe a day to be considered by the business as more as a center of profit than the usual center of cost, which is the first one being touched when they are cost reduction, okay? So this is everything about the pillar around strategy. Moving forward, the second pillar was about mindset, very important. So what did we do to foster or to start fostering an innovation culture within the company? For this one, still using the partners for the blueprint, uh, EDG, we executed last year a series of innovation bootcamp all around the world, okay, to train and invite passionate people 
to the daily innovation activity of our company. Okay? It was like five or six boot camps we organized last year. That was also the occasion for these people to remind that innovation does not mean perfection. Okay? <coughs> Fail fast, learn quickly, and accept the uncertainty. And I can tell you, especially at PMI, I will say, we want to be perfect everywhere, so when you say accept the uncertainty, it's quite challenging. And thanks to this one, we develop more than 100 people in the world with the role of innovation catalyst, who are today our innovation coach at local and regional level, so we can rely on them. What we did as well in this mindset pillar, we started looking at introducing a much more innovative rewarding model for our employee. Okay? Moving from the usual cash model that you don't control, because sometimes you are, I would say, rewarded, you don't know why, and sometimes you are not, you don't know why as well. Okay? So to a much more personalized and controllable model, where we have introduced, for example, gamification, contest, but also starting exposing to the rest of the company the top contributors of our um, organization. And we designed this one because, as you may know, I will say, in each region, each market, the motivation factor for contributing in innovation are completely different. For example, in Europe, tangible. We want money, we want tangible assets. If you go to Asia, for example, just by exposing already people to the top management, it's already a superb reward for them. So that's why our model is very various and trying to cover the different market and region we are working with. Okay? What we did as well in this, Miller, in this mindset pillar, it's not mentioned here, but you might have already figured out in the different slide. As you see, no more reference to PMI. Okay? What we have done is that we designed with an external agency and with some business stakeholders, we invited the business, a visual identity for innovation. Okay? To be sure that if later the business is jumping on what we are doing, they will share exactly the same visual identity, the same branding, and we will not reinvent the wheel. And again, to be sure that what we were doing will not be perceived again as IS for IS, you know? So that's why, for example, we came with this branding, Nova, which is used across everything we are doing. Communication, platform, tools, events, we use it everywhere. And we use lots of word of mouth, I would say, to communicate about this across the organization, and it works very, very well. The last pillar of our strategy is about process and tools. Okay? If creativity is a skill, innovation is a process. Okay? So innovation for us is the ability through discipline to identify the most creative idea and more important, to turn them into reality. Okay? So innovation, as you know, does not equal creativity. You need creativity in your innovation process, but innovation is about how to turn your creative idea into reality, okay? So for this, not a big surprise, we introduce uh, our innovation funnel made of different steps and events. We try to avoid the stage gate, I would say, wordings because we are using it for another purpose at PMI. So we try to do something different. And this funnel help, of course, to select, refine, and found, because we have budget, to found the most promising idea, okay? As you may see, I don't know if you have heard about it, but you see CoStar. So with the, with the help of our innovation partners, we introduced a methodology which is called CoStar. It's a simple framework to enhance the value of your idea and as well to crystallize your thinking. So when we are asking someone, for example, to CoStar an idea, what does it mean for this person? We ask this person to look back at her or his idea and document her or his idea through six letters. Okay? So C stands for the customer. Who are the customers of your idea? O stands for opportunity. Which kind of market opportunity are you trying to address with your idea? S stands for solution. Let me know what is your solution about, okay? Please don't come with a technology. That means, tell me what the solution you are proposing. T stands for teams. Is it a one-man show, or do you need more than one person to make it possible, okay? A stands for advantage, okay? What is your killer advantage? If we have something in place and you propose something else, how do you defer? What should we consider your idea? 
and R at the end stands for results. Let's assume that we have implemented your idea to the scope you are proposing, what the company can expect. What, for example, the business function can expect. Cost savings, cost avoidance, a better work-life ba work balance, maybe a new market opportunity, increased market share. And what is very important when people are documenting this letter, we tell them, and we are supporting them as well, is quantify, okay? Better, faster, cheaper means nothing, okay? Because the first reaction you will have from the board of innovation is, okay, faster, how much? Cheaper, how much? So try to quantify as much as possible. What is nice with this methodology is that very quickly, when you start documenting your idea, and in two pages you cover all these six letters, huh? we are not asking the people to write a business case or a Bible, you can quickly identify if your idea is worth to be further investigated. And we used to make this difference at PMI to say, is it an interesting idea or an important one for the company? Because initially, all the ideas are interesting. But when you start with this methodology, you will quickly identify if the idea is in fact, yeah, just interesting, but not important for the company. Okay? As support to this funnel and uh, the core star methodology, we introduce the ideation management platform from QMarket, which has been, I think, recently rebranding QMAX and their mobile application KeyTouch, which provide today a unique touch point in our company for ideation at regional, global, and local level. So everyone now are moving to this platform and using it to replace even local initiative. Okay? Thanks to this platform, we can, for example, quickly make people visible, the top contributors, we can recognize them, and it also help, I would say, idea to be further developed, to be extended through the collaboration of the rest of the organization, okay? Maybe just another point about, I would say, QMarket. CoreStar and QMarket were chosen for just, one crit or for just one criteria, based on user experience returns, okay? When you introduce an innovation funnel, when you introduce this kind of platform, this kind of methodology, you want to have them as, as self-explanatory as possible, okay? You don't want to start writing a book or training people how to submit an idea, how to document an idea, and oh, by the way, how can I know if my idea has been selected? No. So today, for example, zero training, and people are just jumping on it, and it works, okay? But there was some user experience, I will say, work to make it. In terms of customization, just to, uh, finalize, to finish on this one, as you may see, Nova, so the platform has been branded. We changed a little bit the workflow of the platform, and we provided some basic features like single sign-on, so people are not asked username and password, and user profile synchronization. Because it's a cloud-based solution, but we are fully synced with our um, internal active directory. Now, what are the key achievements so far? Because we launched the program in March last year, and the platform was launched at the end of uh, November last year as well. So today, I mentioned before, we have already more than 120 innovation catalysts certified from all around the world. And this community is growing and growing weeks after weeks. Because when we did the bootcamp yeah, last, last year, first of all, we had a great success. And really, people enjoy it because it was completely different from the usual training workshop we used to do in our company. It was a lot of fun, okay? creating mock-up, playing actor roles. And what is quite interesting is that we have no catalyst going behind IS, our organization, because we have no business function, which have starting certifying some of the employees as catalysts to help them to bring radical innovations. If I look, for example, at our 2015 calendars for the boot camps, we are already full, okay? So we are trying to jungle a little bit with the additional request. Today, we have 10 innovation campaigns hosted in the platform and really different kind of campaigns. We have, for example, very specific functional campaigns. We have cross-function campaign where the audience is super broad, but we have also market campaigns where the campaign is only addressing a market uh, challenge. More than 200 ideas submitted so far. I think 220 if I look at last night's statistics. From a contribution, we have today more than 10% of our IS employees, so around 150 employees, who are week after week contributing to the innovation funnel by submitting, commenting, assessing, voting on idea. 
we have removed from the statistics browsing. Okay, so we're not even looking at just the people looking at what's happening. It's really people, I would say, spending time and to inject input in the platform. Out of all these campaigns, at the moment, we have five prototypes under developments, which came from unsolicited and solicited ideas. And I think, for me, the most, I would say, important, and I'm quite, I would say, super happy about this achievement, is the fact that today we have already two business functions who has joined us, onboarded on the program, and using exactly the same funnel, the same tool, the same process, the same kind of bootcamp, the same kind of methodology. We have supply chain, because what is interesting in supply chain, this is operation. So operation, they are used to optimization. They are used to lean program. They are used to what they call internally open program. The disruptive was something completely new for them. So they are very super happy to have IS put, putting something in place that they can just leverage. The second business function is R&D, research and development uh, for PMI. And we have one major affiliate, which are already onboarded from East Europe, the biggest country, speaking Russian. Okay, so it's Russia. Yesterday, for example, they launched six new innovation campaign across all the country with 4,000 employees uh, targeted. Now, some already key learnings, okay? Just one year programs, a few months the platform and the process, but we have already some key learnings. The, what, what I call the two Ps, passion and perseverance. Okay, especially in a company like us, that means you need to have passions to make this program happening and to progress. Because this is completely different from a project, okay? You need passion. And more important, you need to be very quickly surrounded, first of all, of course, by the buy-in of your management, but by passionate people as well to make it happen. The second one is perseverance. Of course, you will find, I will say, blockers. Okay, you will find obstacles. I can tell you, I can guarantee you will find obstacles for your programs. You know, the no people, it will never work. We're already trying it. And we used to do like this since years. And why are you, I will say, disturbing me with your crazy idea? So you will find obstacles. But there will be all the time a way to bypass them or to find another road without jeopardizing your mission, your vision, okay? But please, and this is one of the key learning, don't get stuck, okay? Because we have some business function which are afraid a little bit about disruptive idea, okay? Because there is a natural change, I will say, against, there is a natural, sorry, reaction against change, okay? So if you are stuck with a business function, jump on another one. And I can guarantee you, you will find what we call your early adapters. The ones that are convinced about what you are doing. And the other function will be more tempted to follow early adapters than playing the guinea pig, okay? When I mean bar is high for, I will say, radical. As I mentioned before, in our company, we have super program in place for optimization, for efficiency, for lean programs. But I will say when the entry ticket is about disruptive idea, it's a big challenge, okay? And I can tell you, you have to explain what the big difference between both. What are you expecting, okay? What they should provide you as idea, okay? They will be, for sure, out of all the idea you will receive, you will have 95% which will be purely incremental, and maybe five, three percent, which are really thinking out of the box. So when you have this kind of example, go back to the others, present them what you are expecting. Very important. I mentioned before, innovation does not equal perfection, okay? And this is super, I would say, true for our company, where we want to check any bits before launching something, okay? So we want already to, I would say, have, remove all the risk before starting the project. So when you start talking about innovation with the rest of the organization, you have to explain them that, yes, we may fail. Failure is an option, okay? Unlike uh, Apollo 13, failure is an option, innovation. But we have to fail fast and to learn quickly. Super important, having a common language and tool across the organization help to fairly compare idea between them. And for example, I mentioned before the use of CoreStar. Using CoreStar across all the organization is a super asset. Because sometimes you are receiving similar idea from different functions. Just by comparing them with the same, I will say, methodology, you can either join them or you can easily select the one you prefer. And again, people who are used to CoreStar in our company now, 
can quickly identify the potential of an idea, okay? And when you start documenting, you will be easily see if your idea, again, is just interesting or important. Because if you start being stuck with some letters, you say, oops, looks like no great potential. When I mean take every opportunity to communicate, okay? As I mentioned, there will be lots of obstacles, lots of barriers, lots of no, 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 no. Why should we do this? That means let's continue our conventional product as we do, blah, blah, blah. No, that means in our case, for example, we are taking any internal opportunity at the low, medium, high management to talk about what we are doing and to come already with some early achievement to say, guys, you see, for example, this business function is already behind us, working with us. Okay, why are you not making the same? Okay, it's possible. So we are really taking any opportunity in our company to make it. Something that surprised some of our, I would say, employee is about that technology generation is not a barrier for innovation. When we launched all these programs, all these campaigns, initially we were thinking, or lots of people were thinking that only millennium generation will come with idea. You know, the people who are below 30 years old because they are used to technology. And lots of people say, well, I'm not expecting anything from the rest. Just the new people that will come with idea. It's not true. And today we are super surprised to see that sometimes innovation comes from unexpected sources or from unexpected people. And it works. And uh, another one is don't, don't underestimate, sorry, do not underestimate effort for managing the innovation process, management process. You might have a super platform, super tools, super methodology, but it still requires human efforts to filter, to select, and to help, okay? And success brings success, okay? So if you can quickly come back to the business and say this is something coming from the other function and it works, it will create much more interest. And I will finish just with this one, explaining what we are working on at the moment, because as the program is is moving fast. So we are trying to move from close to open innovation. So today we are really centralizing or uh, focusing our efforts on employee. But working as well with the R&D department, we are looking at how we can position at PMI open innovation, which kind of open innovation model we would like to have, scouting, crowdsourcing, and how we will work in the future with external sources of innovations. We will continue to what we call institutionalize the NOVA in the rest of the organization because it's starting working, so let's continue. We will extend our innovation network outside the company with all this global presence we have. We will try to find still some accelerators for the funnel, because even if you have an innovation funnel and, and, and a platform like QMarket or CoreStar methodology, you still need to find some other accelerators, and especially, for example, when you are looking at prototyping because you will be confronted by procurement, legal, security issue. So today we have already some accelerator to speed up this funnel, but there are still room for improvement. And last but not least, and I will conclude on this, maintain the momentum, okay? The road ahead is still long. We have noticed that the mindset has started shifting, but it's not time for us to slow down and to curb the enthusiasm. We need to push, we need to push, and this is the only way if you want to have a sustainable mindset shift. Thank you. I will invite maybe Michael if you want to say just a few words about Q Markets for two minutes. Michael was, I will say, our main counterpart for introducing the, um, the ideation management platform last year. Thank you.